Thank you so much for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. Mom and I consider it an honor, a tremendous honor and privilege that we get to spend time with you, but not just that we get to spend time with you. More importantly, that we get to share the Bible with you and help you to understand how to apply it in very relevant modern terms, modern ways. Because here's, here's what both mom and I know to be true from our own life experience, that the Bible, although it seems old, although it's written a long, long time ago, that's what's so magnificent about the Bible is that it is timeless, that it absolutely transcends all time because God transcends all time. And you may be watching right now and you may be struggling with time. Maybe that's a real issue for you. You say, I just don't have any time. I feel like I just go from one thing to the next and I have no time. In fact, you've even said, maybe even this morning, you said, look, I wish I had 30 hours in the day because I have just so much to do. And God wants you to know that he's got the right amount of time for you for the right amount of, of, of things you have to do, the right amount of demands. So if you're struggling with time and using time, it might be how you use your time, then please call because we'd like to pray for you that God would help you on how you use your time. If you can't get to the phone, then get on the website and leave a prayer request there. But God wants to help you manage your time because the truth of it is time is a gift and God has blessed time. It's not a curse. Time is not a curse. Time is a blessing. God blessed it uh, when he created the whole universe. He blessed time. He blessed the days. And so I encourage you, God wants to bless this day and bless your time. And, you know, I was thinking about this and I just want to give you a quick encouraging testimony from Cynthia. You know, we oftentimes tell you to please call, call for prayer or get on the website. And this is the reason why we do this. We want to encourage you that God answers prayer. And Cynthia from New Jersey, just like you, just like me, she called the prayer prayer center for salvation for her father. <clears throat> After years of prayer for his salvation, Cynthia was able to lead him in the sinner's prayer and he accepted Jesus into his heart. We were able to pray with Cynthia to encourage her and also to stand in faith with her. So that's why we tell you to call because we know that God answers prayer and it's a way for us to encourage you as well. So get on the phone and call. Cynthia called because she wanted her father to get saved. You may have a need in your life related to your health. You may have a need in your life related to your family, kind of like Cynthia. Maybe you have a need in your life related to a decision that you've got to make and you think, oh, I'm really stressed out about this decision. Well, get on the phone and call because we like to pray for you. It encourages you and we see breakthroughs. We see answers. So hop on the phone or get to the website and say, and just leave your prayer request there. But it's an honor for us to get to pray for you. And you know, I'm very, very, very excited about a teaching that I get to share with you now. I've been praying about this for a few weeks and I'm excited because the truth of it is, this teaching, I think of all the teachings that I love to share, love to minister, love to speak about, this one I think is my sweet spot. And you say, what do you mean by a sweet spot? Well, I remember when I was in basketball, I had a friend and, and in eighth grade, we had a competition to see who could shoot the most free throws. And a friend of mine, she was really, really good at free throws. Her name was Carrie. And we would shoot 50 free throws and we'd do 10, you know, five sets of 10. And Carrie, nine, I mean, she would just bang them in there all the time. And, and the free throw line would be what we would call her sweet spot. So that whenever she got to the free throw line, and sometimes it's a mental thing or whatever, but you just know, I'm going to, every time I get to this spot on the floor, nine, 10 out of 10 times, I'm going to make it. And I say that because this message is my sweet spot. This is one of the best things that I ever could minister to you and I feel so strongly about. So I want to encourage you to put your remote control down because we're going to be talking today about a deeper walk with God. And I share this to you, with you today because I feel like every single one of us, I know this in the bottom of my heart, every single one of us, no matter where you're at in life, no matter what the season is in your life, no matter how long you've known of Jesus or haven't known of him, we can all have a deeper walk with God. And you say, well, that's not really what I need. Well, let me help encourage you. We all need a deeper walk with God. And this is something to help you understand why. And, Ma and Jesus says this in Matthew 6, He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to you. And if we're not careful, we get into all the other things first. And oh, by the way, the kingdom of God. Oh, let's throw that in there too. And you may be watching right now and you may be having all these needs. You may have financial needs in your life. Absolutely. You may have health needs in your life. 
You may have decisions. You may have relationship needs. and You may have emotional needs. You may have all of those and, and add some more on. Maybe you have a, a struggle in your life with suicide. Maybe you're struggling with an addiction in your life. I'm telling you, all those things, they're very real, tangible needs in our life. But what Jesus says in Matthew 6, is to seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. I'm going to give you a great example that happened to me yesterday. And I share this with you because I want to encourage you that God can do this in your life as well. And remember, you can always call for prayer. We want you to, we really want to pray with you. And, and specifically today, I want you to call for prayer to receive a deeper walk with God. But let me share this testimony. We'll jump in and see a great example of a, of a biblical person, character, who had a deeper and an ongoingly deeper walk with God. But yesterday I was driving and this is what happened. Yesterday afternoon I had some some uh, administrative challenges. And administra administrative work for me isn't really my sweet spot. My real sweet spot is getting to study the Bible, getting to minister like this with you and share about how God is moving in our lives and encourage each other. I love doing that. I mean, I just, oh, it makes my heart just pitter patter. So, but yesterday I had a lot of administrative work and <clears throat> I needed to work through some of it and I was doing that and, and doing some good stuff and making some good progress on it. But I hit a couple of hiccups in the road, you know, and, and some things that were a struggle to me, some things that bothered me, some things that I didn't, some reports that I got, I was like, I don't like that. That's irritating. That's annoying to me. And, and it wasn't just annoying and irritating. There were some things where I was like, oh, that's, and it stressed me out. I mean, absolutely stressed me out. When I came home, uh, my husband came home and I was trying to help the kids with some homework and, and he and I had some, and I was already stressed out a little bit from work and then he and I had some interesting conversation that didn't, you know, kind of make me peaceful. <laughs> we didn't necessarily have an overt fight, but we definitely had a disagreement. And so I had to leave because I had an appointment to go to. And, and uh, as I'm driving, I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out because I had a lot of stuff at work that didn't necessarily go the way I wanted it to. I had some conflict with my husband. And then I get in the car and I'm running late to this appointment. Plus it's rush hour traffic. And I can't get my friend on the phone to tell him I'm going to be late. So my stress level is going bing, 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 bing. Do you ever feel that way? You just feel like, Ugh! are you uh? And so, you know, I thought I could get on the phone and call all these people and try and get a bunch of work done and all this stuff, or I can seek first the kingdom of God. And that's the decision I made to do. And so what I did was I just started to pray and I put on some worship music and started to sing to God and just started praying and thanking God and saying, thank you, God, that you're in this situation. I thank you that you know exactly the conversation I had with Reese. I thank you, Father, that there's nothing impossible, that you can change me. You can change the situation. You can turn stuff around that I thought was a bad report. You can turn it and make it into a good report. I thank you. And so I just took the next, and it's rush hour traffic, so it took twice as long to get there. And I took that time to really press into God and really seek God. And by the time I arrived at my appointment, whew, I felt like a weight had lifted off of my shoulders. And I share that with you because this is absolutely the truth what Jesus says. Seek first the kingdom of God. And maybe you're watching today and you've been stressed out. Maybe you've been stressed out. Man, pick a topic. If you're like me, yesterday I was stressed out. I could tell you I was stressed out about some finances. I was stressed out about some decisions. I was stressed out about some health stuff, stressed out about some relationship stuff, having some emotional struggles. I mean, I was stressed out. And if you're watching today and you are stressed out, we want to pray for you. So pick up the phone, call right now and say, pray for me. I'm really having a struggle here. If you can't get to the phone, then get on the website, leave your prayer request there. But we want to pray for you when you're stressed out that God can help you and really move into your situation and really bring you peace where the devil's meant to have you panicky and, and in chaos. But you know, when we think about uh, having a deeper walk with God, I want to just minister for a few moments about Moses. I love Moses. The reason I love Moses is because he was very strategically used by God. And if you look at the end of his life, oh my goodness, did he have a walk with God? Uh, he, to me, he had an enviable walk with God. And what I like about Moses is that he didn't just go from zero to 120 in his walk with God overnight. Bing! But there was a progression to this. And I want to encourage you. And like I said earlier, sometimes I think we look at people who are really old in Christ and, we're, and they've been walking with God forever and a day. And we think, oh, they've arrived. But the truth of it is all of us can have a deeper walk with God. And we all need a deeper walk with God, not just on a personal level for me as an individual, 
But my family needs me to have a deeper walk with God because they interact with me on a regular basis. My coworkers need me to have a deeper walk with God. My, the teachers for my kids, <laughs> they need me to have a deeper walk with God because as I have a deeper walk with God, I am changed. I'm a different person. I have more peace. I bring, I bring solutions. I bring creative creativity. I bring wisdom because of my relationship with God. And I want to say this to you. Many times we say, well, God, I want you to move in that situation. God's saying, I'm using the situation situation so that you will draw closer to me. So many times when we're struggling and there's hardship in our life, whether it's a health issue, whether it's a, a financial issue, those hardships, when we have those hardships, if we'll turn to God and they oftentimes really push us to turn to God because we say, I don't know what else to do. And we turn to God and we see God answer those situations, those, those needs. But I want to say this to you. God's desire is to have a very deep walk with you. He wants to know you. He wants you to know him better tomorrow than you know him today. God is beckoning you and inviting you to have a tremendously deep, personal and vibrant relationship with him. Not through religion, not through somebody else and without a mediator, but between you and God. So I want to encourage you that you pick up the phone right now and say, pray for me that I would have a deeper walk with God, that I would know his voice better, that I would recognize his presence, that I would see him moving in my life, that I would hear and that my fellowship with God would be deeper than I've ever had it before. So pick up the phone and call, say, pray for me. I want a deeper walk with God or get on the website. But I want to tell you, family, I totally want to tell you that God wants to have a very deep walk with you. And that's absolutely true. You see that from Moses. God wanted to have a deep walk and relationship with Moses. And that's where he starts off with Moses at the burning bush. Discover Jesus in every book of the Bible. For your gift of any amount, we will send you Volume 7 of the Seeing Jesus Workbook Set, which includes six video lessons on DVD. Discover Jesus as the King of Kings in Daniel and Revelation. For your gift of $175 or more, we will send you all seven of the Seeing Jesus Bible Encounter Series workbooks and the Seeing Jesus Study Guide in one complete set, along with our all-new Seeing Jesus Heat Transforming Thermal Coffee Mug. This unique mug is solid black when cold, but any hot beverage reveals the names of every book of the Bible and the words Seeing Jesus. In the 500-plus page study guide, see how the Old Testament was written to prepare the way for the Redeemer and how the purpose of the New Testament was to prepare the people to receive the Redeemer. Through the workbooks, go in depth into each book of the Bible. See Jesus as the seed in Genesis and the King of Kings in Revelation. For your gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you the complete workbook set, the study guide, the mug, the Seeing Jesus Afghan, the Seeing Jesus Bible, and the all new Seeing Jesus Devotional, featuring a full year of daily devotionals that enhance your walk through every book of the Bible. Through this extensive resource, you will have the tools you need to empower you to see Jesus throughout the Bible and transform your Bible study into a life-changing experience. Call or click today. We are so excited to invite you to come with us on our fall group trip. It is a trip of a lifetime. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this trip. We get to go to China and Tibet and Singapore. And mom, it's not just that we're going to pop through those places. No, it's no. exciting what we get to do there. Yeah, we will do prayer walking in China. We'll do it in Tibet. Can you imagine? But also we're going to Singapore and I will be ministering in New Creation Church at Joseph Prince's Church. So it will be a glorious opportunity for you. And I wouldn't just think of myself. I would think of how many people I could get to go with me. And why not scholarship some people? When these trips are ministry times, and really it is an opportunity of a lifetime. So don't put it off. Pray about it. Go with us. God is going to say yes. Go with Marilyn and Sarah. It's very, very important for you. When we talk about God having a deep relationship with us, you need to understand that when God spoke to Moses, the very first time God spoke to Moses that we know of is in Exodus chapter 3, and this is with the burning bush. And I, I just, I love this introduction. I love how God introduces himself to Moses. 
Because it's not like Moses is, you know, on his face, fasting and praying, 40 days and seeking the face of God. Moses is out in the wilderness on an average day, taking care of his flock of sheep, kind of in his later years of his life. I think he's around 80 years old. And he's basically chilling out, hanging out with his flock, you know, doing the normal routine, daily, whatever that sheep do when you're doing the pasture thing with them, you know, you're, when you're a shepherd. And Moses is chilling, relaxing, doing the sheep thing. And out of the blue, maybe the corner of his eye, uh, there's a fire. What's with the fire? And the fire out in the wilderness. Hmm, we better check that out. So he goes over and he checks out this fire. It's a bush that's burning. And the Bible describes it as a bush that's burning, but it's not consumed. So that means it stays on fire and, and continually, because, you know, fire would burn out with a bush, you know, because it runs out of fuel. But this bush kept burning. And, you know, that's going to catch your attention. And God gets Moses' attention because God wants to have a relationship with Moses. And he draws Moses in. And, and the way he draws him in is he draws him in by telling him, I have an assignment for you and I want you to go. You're going to, I'm going to use you to liberate the nation of Israel. He tells him all this tremendous stuff. And Moses is virtually like speechless. He can't believe it. And God introduces himself and kind of sets it out and says, this is the path I have in front of you. But really, I believe this with all my heart. I believe that God's ultimate desire is to have a deep relationship with you. And whatever happens around us, you know, whether it's a burning bush, <laughs> whether it's a kid that runs away from our home, whether it's a financial struggle that we go through, whether it's a health crisis, whether it's a, an emotional difficulty that we're wrestling with, I think all those things, God, God sometimes can use those things to get our attention. To say, hey, I want a deeper walk with you. Hey, I want you to connect with me more thoroughly, more wholly, more fully. And you may be watching right now and maybe you've had some fears in your life and maybe you've had some words spoken to you that say, oh, God doesn't love you. God is not concerned about you. In fact, God is an angry God. And he wants you to know today that God is a loving God. He deeply cares about you. When you wake up in the morning, it makes him smile. He's glad when you wake up and he wants to have a deep relationship with you. Get on the phone right now and say, pray for me that I would have a deep relationship with God. And you know, at the end of our time today, I'm going to pray with you because many of you watching, you've never had that formal and, and beginning introduction, if you will, relationship with God. You've never actually asked God to come into your life and, and Jesus to be a part of your daily living. And we're going to pray at the end and do that. But I encourage you, God, in the meantime, God wants to have a deep, deep walk with you. He started it with Moses and he started it with a burning bush. But it's interesting because after the burning bush and, and Moses' eyes are like bugging out of his head. Oh my goodness, there's a burning bush. And then he doesn't believe what God says. He's like, that's crazy. There's no way. No one will believe me. No one wants to know that I'm going to come back and liberate them, you know, from, from slavery and from bondage. Nobody's going to buy that. That's a, that's hokey pokey. And God says, I'm going to give you a sign and, a, and proof. And so he does, you know, leprosy in the jacket with his hand. And then he does the throw the rod down. It turns into a snake. And, and then Moses argues with God, well, I can't speak, you know, I'm slow of speech. And God says, I'll, I'll help you. I'll bring Aaron along and he can help you speak. And, and God always meets us at our lowest point where we're least able where we're absolutely, we have our excuses and we have, I can't do this. And, there, and God says, I know you can't, but I, I don't call the people who are equipped. I call, I, I equip the people who I call. And God is saying to you, I am giving you a desire to have a deeper walk with me. So Moses goes through and, and follows through with what God tells him. And he says, okay, we'll do, I'll follow through and I'll stay in line and I'll obey with what you tell me to do. And he goes to Pharaoh. And from that point on, there's a little bit of a turning point because this is kind of the first introduction and you got to have an introduction with God. You got to have a starting point. You got to say, okay, Jesus, come into my life. You have to have that uh, affirmation, that permission, if you will. Okay, God, I want to have a deeper walk with you. I see that you want me to have a deep walk with you. And I, I say, yeah. I agree with you. Let's do that. So that's that initial part right there. But the next thing is that Moses starts to walk into that deeper walk with God by obeying God. And he does it with the, the 10 plagues and not only the 10 plagues, but also 
When Israel walks out of slavery from Egypt and they walk and God rescues them through the Red Sea and, and uh, Pharaoh's army that chases them down, you see this whole amazing experience with God. And it's not just that God wants to have a deep relationship with Moses, but now the Israelites start to have their eyes open and see, oh my goodness, this is amazing. This is absolutely incredible. The God of the universe is concerned about our freedom, is concerned about our future, is concerned about us as a nation. Oh, that's incredible. And that's what you experience with God. When you personally say yes to God, I want a deeper walk with you, then the people around you begin to have some of that overflow. And that's what happened with Moses. They, the people, the nation that God had called them to and said, yeah, I want you to liberate them. They began to have an overflow of Moses' walk with God, even though it was just the beginning part of his walk with God. But now the Israelites are starting to walk in more freedom and more freedom. And not just freedom, but also in identity. And oftentimes when God calls you into a deeper walk with him, he's going to deal with you on some of your identity issues. You may be watching right now and you're struggling with insecurity. You're struggling with some, some identity problems you had from growing up. You're struggling with some identity issues uh, from words that your parents said to you or words that your parents didn't say to you. Maybe your father never said to you, I love you. And so that's an identity problem for you. It's hard for you to deal with that. Maybe you're struggling with some identity issues from something a, a teacher said to you. But I want to encourage you, God can help you walk through that and can really dispel the lie and replace it with his truth of who he says you are. And that comes from a deeper walk with God. So get on the phone right now. You're struggling with your identity. Then get on the phone. We want to pray for you. Some of you have a false identity. Some of you have the identity that says you're worthless. Some of you have an identity that says I'm full of fear. And fear is very comfortable. It's a natural terrain for you. God wants to set you free from that. Some of you are struggling with a fear of, of being not just insecure, but you're underneath everybody. And you're like, oh, I can't do that. And, and everybody's better than me. And I'm just kind of this low life, you know, bottom feeder. And God wants to break that identity in you and he wants to break it through a deeper relationship with you. So get on the phone and say, pray for me that I would have a deeper walk with God, that he would help me in my identity. As you think about Moses, he goes on, he walks through the 10 plagues, he walks through the Red Sea and he brings the Israelites out into the wilderness. And then Moses has, I think, one of the most full culminating experiences with God that we ever read about. And this is at Mount Sinai. And this is where God gives him the Ten Commandments. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. This is where he experiences and, and really senses the presence of God. This is where God tells him about the tabernacle and building a place where he, God's presence could dwell with the Israelites because God wants again and again and again. God wants to have a deeper relationship with you. And if you're sick today, if you're struggling in your finances, you got some family issues that are that are capturing your attention, I want to challenge you. In Matthew 6, it says, seek first the kingdom of God. If you'll press into God and you'll say, God, I want to know you. I see how God used Moses, introduction, kind of helped him grow in his faith, also moving into Sinai. God wants to have a deeper relationship with you. So please get on the phone and call right now. Call right now. Say, hey, pray for me that I would have a deeper walk with God. But as I said, I want to finish this program and time together today that each of us would, would really uh, yield to that relationship, that we can pray and ask God to come into our lives, even if it's just the first introduction, the first step. So I want to take a quick moment here and invite you to pray with me. We're going to pray and ask Jesus to come into our lives, come into our heart. So I want you to say this and repeat this prayer with me. You said it a million times. You've never said it before. Let's all do this right now. Just say with me, dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've done. Please come into my heart. Thank you for forgiving me. Be my Lord and Savior from this moment for the rest of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, that's the most powerful prayer you can ever pray in your entire life because that's an introduction prayer and saying, yes, God, I acknowledge you want to have a deeper relationship with me, and I want to have a deeper relationship with you. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or kind of like as a, a redo, a rededication, get on the phone. We want to continue to pray for you that God would help you to grow in your relationship with Him.
Discover Jesus in every book of the Bible. For your gift of any amount, we will send you Volume 7 of the Seeing Jesus Workbook Set, which includes six video lessons on DVD. Discover Jesus as the King of Kings in Daniel and Revelation. For your gift of $175 or more, we will send you all seven of the Seeing Jesus Bible Encounter Series workbooks and the Seeing Jesus Study Guide in one complete set, along with our all-new Seeing Jesus Heat Transforming Thermal Coffee Mug. This unique mug is solid black when cold, but any hot beverage reveals the names of every book of the Bible and the words Seeing Jesus. In the 500-plus page study guide, see how the Old Testament was written to prepare the way for the Redeemer and how the purpose of the New Testament was to prepare the people to receive the Redeemer. Through the workbooks, go in depth into each book of the Bible. See Jesus as the seed in Genesis and the King of Kings in Revelation. For your gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you the complete workbook set, the study guide, the mug, the Seeing Jesus Afghan, the Seeing Jesus Bible, and the all new Seeing Jesus Devotional, featuring a full year of daily devotionals that enhance your walk through every book of the Bible. Through this extensive resource, you will have the tools you need to empower you to see Jesus throughout the Bible and transform your Bible study into a life-changing experience. Call or click today. The Bible says healing is the bread of the children. So today, I want you to eat some bread, bread of healing. Where do you need healing in your body? Let's believe God for that because it really is our bread. It was purchased in the atonement. So we need to claim what the Bible says we can have. So I'm gonna ask you to put your hand on any area of your body that you need healing. I, need, I love to pray for the sick. So put your hand, it's on your, you say, I have 10 things. Put your hand on top of your head. We'll just believe for everything. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word into this body that heals it, delivers it from every destruction. And in Jesus' name, I speak wholeness. Amen. Now, I believe you've received, but you need to act in faith. Don't look for your sickness. Look for your miracle and stand in faith for it. This is very important. Now, this is the way I stand. I not only stand for healing, but health. Because when I look at Jehovah Rapha, it has to do with health. And Moses received the revelation of that name, and he lived to 120. His eye didn't get dim. His natural force was not abated. Why? Because he knew that there was healing and health for him, and he lived in it. So why don't you just call in right now and say, hey, I am believing for healing in my body. Name the place, don't take a long time and say, I am believing for health. And maybe you have a loved one on your heart who needs healing or who needs health. Then give us those names and we're gonna pray. And just say, Marilyn told me to call in today for healing and health. And we're gonna stand in faith and see great miracles. Yeah. 